I'm literally watching it here as well to see what's happening. Are you stopped over? Mm -hmm. It could be a little bit slower. A bit of a delay. I hope the sound isn't too delayed. Okay, so there, there, there is a little bit of a delay. Um, what was the sound? <laughs> um, this is how so. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, okay, we're just trying to see. The sound does not sound good, so. Awkward. <laughs> right, if we each person say something, hi Instagram people, we are just sorting ourselves out, so thank you for joining us. Um, we will see what, what is happening. <laughs> Fine. It doesn't sound like how it sounds from, from there. Yeah. Oh, that is interesting. Maybe. Well, it's alright. No one's viewing. It. Yeah. People viewing, but I don't know. I turn the master down a little bit. Yeah, so it's this. not too. Yeah. Cool. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, so I think just introduce yourselves. Okay, so my name is Gemma Jones. I am an actress and a singer and a mum as well. I'm putting that there in my job title because it's definitely one of my jobs. <laughs> Hi, I'm Coral Neal. I'm an actress. I um, make, just act, really. That's literally all I do. <laughs> Cool. And I'm Shone, I created a black actress. Um, I brought these ladies together just to open the world to see what it means to be a black actress. Um, and I wanted to share their stories and have everyone be part of it, really. So, um, what does it mean to you to be a black actress? I guess that's sort of where we're going to start. Such a big oh, question. Really, it's so, it? Such a big question. Yeah, I think when you asked this, my answer, or well, part of my answer definitely was that I think if we, it would be lovely to come to a point, I suppose, where we're just looked at as actresses, mm. that we're going into jobs and we're not being employed only because we are black, but because, you know, we're the best person for the job and it's not a character that is entirely linked to our identity and our culture and um, those roles are obviously important and need to be there, but also I think real change happens when we are just the doctor or we're just the, you know, the barrister or the, you know, the non, maybe more non-stereotypical roles that might be that are out there. So I think that would be a place that would be, I think, feel really good to get to. And we are definitely on that. I think we're on that road already. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I think that um, roles are definitely becoming less stereotypical and characters are becoming more complex. But I think that there are certain people in the industry who are pushing that forward. Um, but I mean, it still has ways to go though. But yeah, it would be nice to not sort of be the black character and feel like you have the whole weight of an entire people to somehow represent in, in what you're what you're portraying. Sure. Cool. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a black actress, so <laughs> it's, um, for me, I think it's just about seeing 
black women on screen. I think that's, it's, it's just, it's important. I think it's important for us as women to see ourselves. And I think that you guys doing this is, is it, it's moving everything forward for everyone. So that's kind of why I'm grateful and why I started the project as well, to just, you know, platform and say that, you know, everyone deserves fair representation. And I yeah. think the best way that we kind of relate to other people is when we see ourselves on TV, on stage, and that kind of thing, really. Yeah, I definitely think I would have, you know, thought twice about becoming an actress if I hadn't seen black faces on screens, you know, black women, and, you know, some level of representation to look up to and to aspire for, like, you know, aspire to be similar to. Um, but, you know, I, I think as a, a minority, I think you always, you are scared to, you know, reach out and think, okay, well, is there a space for me? Mm. Is, or will there be roles for me that I can relate to um, or fit myself into and be authentic? Mm. I remember being really young and, yeah, going to the theatre and probably even less so on like TV screens that you that you were seeing black performers, but I do remember seeing certain. It was black men actually more so. Mm -hmm. I think back into my mind of the shows that I saw as a youngster. So probably the Lion King. I remember Starlight Express seeing that quite early doors, and there was a a, a, a couple of black guys in there, and I was just like, yeah. I remember seeing Five Guys named Mo quite early on in my when I was young before I was acting, and being really inspired and thinking, oh, <laughs> this this could be really good. It's possible, you know. Um, and I, I suppose in, in some ways, you know, if you are interested in whatever it is you're interested in in life, if it is something that speaks to your heart and you want to do it, you go for it. You'd hope, you know, that you'd go for it 100% regardless of what you're seeing out there. But it definitely helps, I think, if you're seeing people that are similar, look like you, that say, oh, goodness, I, can, I, could, I could possibly do this. Yeah, because um, you, you ask all artists, really, you know, they have variations on why they are an artist, why they're an actor and, and so on. But it's all pretty much the same, this idea that, you know, they, was, they were drawn to it and, and they felt like, I can't not do this. I have, to, I have to at least try, I have to see where it takes me and just like jump on that journey. Because um, you, you want to tell those stories. And, and it not be about how you look necessarily, mm -hmm. but about the humanity in that, in that character and in that story. And hoping that that will, you know, relate and resonate with other people. That's, I think, really, ultimately, that's the goal. Cool. And, Coral, you are championing with equity. I suppose um, representation behind the screen and basically sort of making sure that, you know, as, as, as black women and, uh, you know, black actors and actresses, that the care is being taken and, you know, tell us more about that. Yeah, so I'm kind of an accidental activist. Um, I, it, I think it was because there was so much time because of COVID, you know, I had three jobs at that time that were forthcoming and they all cancelled because of COVID-19 and we were asked to sit at home and wait and see. Um, and I, I just was thinking over some of the experience I'd had uh, on professional jobs and lead roles and what it was, what could have been better? What, what sort of struggles did I experience? And one of the things that came up um, too often, I found, was there was an issue around hair and makeup. For me, it was predominantly hair. Um, I remember distinctly being a lead in, in a, a job and the hairstylist just had no idea. And she kind of just sort of said, okay, well, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's fine. And that just didn't sit right with me. You know, I felt really demoralized by that experience and I just thought well I can't be the only artist the only black artist that's had this and you know we're not even talking about the men and their experiences you know the number of times I haven't seen any sort of barbering tools or equipment for men you just think okay well it's definitely not a singular story so I'm going to use my voice to, to sort of spearhead this working with equity and basically collaborating with them um, because incidentally, they had also a coffee morning talking about this and they had no answers. Mm -hmm. you know, artists were saying, okay, well, what about these complaints around hair and makeup and this discrimination that we're experiencing? And they sort of said, we'll get back to you. <laughs> and I just thought that's not a good enough answer. Mm -hmm. We need to actually 
call it out and say, this is, has, this is how bad it's been for me. Has anyone else got stories? And I, I knew that when I, was, when I put that video out that I wouldn't have the most horrific stories because friends of mine who were, who were in the industry had already told me worse stories than that. And so I think it's just, it was, it's something that I think is essential that needs to be addressed. And luckily people are taking notice, but I, I can't credit myself for why it's suddenly taken on a life of its own really. But I think it's definitely got more to do with the Black Lives Matter movement, George Flo uh, Floyd and everything around that. I definitely feel like people are ready to talk about it. Yeah. Timing is, yeah. is, yeah. is a big thing, isn't it? I was saying that earlier before we went live that even when you shot a black actress in this portrait series, where we were back in 2019, and it's, it feels like nothing much has sort of happened in there, and then nobody wanted to even listen to what you were trying to say with this shoot, and actually, well, in this time, you know, now we've got a year on, and because of time, like you said, COVID everything that's come to the forefront for a lot of people. And now it's like, oh, all of a sudden, there are more eyes on them, people actually sitting up and taking notice of grievances that have been there for probably for a very long time yeah, for people. Too. Or, you know, doors are now open that, or starting to open that maybe weren't, weren't before, you know, even, yeah. even up to just a year ago, maybe for you. Um, it was, I think it's definitely been challenging mm -hmm. to sort of get people to be interested in it and see that it's something that you know it's it's worthwhile talking about and you know the response was at the time you know everyone thought it was a great you know great subject matter and i think as black women we were really really excited about it i think as um for the rest of us uh, or the rest of the world it was kind of like well what does it really matter? Yeah. And like I said, now that you know everyone's kind of stuck at home and there's nothing else for them to do, it's something that they can actually, you know, focus on and be like, okay, this is actually interesting. This is worthwhile. This is it, it's a subject that we need to talk about. Um, sorry, guys, I'm just trying to okay. <laughs> keep an eye on it here as well. It is a um, topic, but it's 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 so much broader than just our industry because I mean I know from lifetime ago when I was even working outside of the entertainment industry that you know in corporate scenarios you were finding women didn't feel comfortable wearing their hair natural or or even certain braided styles were frowned upon yeah. and I think that's what makes it relatable they were thinking you know I this discrimination that afro hair experiences that other hair textures just don't mm -hmm. because it doesn't fit the mold it doesn't it's not it's not the idea of the Western standard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if you want to wear it naturally, you have to kind of give a reason or, mm. and, and it, you have to go above and beyond yeah. to, to make it satisfactory in, in the eyes of other people in terms of how they think it should look. And, you know, it's almost as if it's, a lot of people, I think, unfortunately, sort of see Afro hair as a 70s style. Mm. And you yeah. think it's not a style. It's mm -hmm. actually a... It's what my hair does. And there needs to be support for that. And yeah. I think the only reason that I've actually felt comfortable raising it as an issue is because in our industry, it is um, a professional part of the job. Yeah, yeah. And so it needs to be managed in a professional way. It's not just me saying, oh, I like, can you do my hair better? <laughs> it's, it's actually, no, no, no. I mean, the optics are everything. And so there needs, the department needs to know how to deal with that. Yeah. And so it feels like it's, it's okay to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think in situations that I've been in within theatre or in commercial work that I've done, it's always been a case of, you just sort of do it yourself. <laughs> Since my hair's been Afro, it's like, mm. and, and I felt more comfortable with that, which is I think very telling, isn't it? That yeah. I would rather, even on a professional job, I would probably prefer to go and say, oh, I'll deal with my own hair because I know how to style it and I know mm. I'm gonna walk away going, yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like, as opposed to someone having a little bit of a go and then, then I, the one on the camera going, this is just not right. <laughs> that's the worst feeling in the world yeah. when you've either had, we all had that coming out of a salon even then you say, cut a little bit off and they've cut all your hair off and you're like, this is the right yeah. yeah. So again, yeah. you know, that's multiplied by a thousand if you're now trying to step on a set or something with a hairstyle or, you know, a look that you're just going, no, I could have 
absolutely done we're this better. We're going to keep talking because we're live. Um, there are a couple of things that I, I want to tweak. So okay. I'm going to leave you guys talking and yeah. I'm just going to tweak the cameras. Or Actually, Celine, would you be able to tweak the cameras for me? Just mm -hmm. to. Um, would you, would you so if you put oh, yeah, um, both cameras just to bring the exposure down a little bit. So <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what you get with a live stream. This is yeah. what you. Um, so make it more. Um, because I've just noticed that you're slightly overexposed and people are like, oh, you don't even know how to like black people. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, you guys aren't, you know, what are you talking about? And also, I'm just going to check the sound again because, you know. <laughs> oh, the sound is really bad. <laughs> 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 So I think let's bring our, bring our mics down a little bit lower. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's that wasted. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we're doing that. Oh, I'm doing this in there. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm doing this. No. Not too good. You almost sound like two conversations on there. Sorry? I'm going to come over. Oh, okay. I know. Actually, yeah, if, if, if you guys can, um, if anyone can say anything and let us know how the sound is for you. Tell us what the sound is. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna do the playback. <laughs> this is a That sounds bad. Yeah. Oh, we're so sorry, everyone. If you were hearing some madness before, um, hopefully that is better. And there is going to be a playback, so that will hopefully sound a hell of a lot better. But yeah, back to where we were. <laughs> Talk about hair. Yeah, hair. So, so sorry, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, there's, there's it's. It's interesting because I mean a lot of people came forward and, mm. and responded with their their various stories, and it was I, I, the for, I was fortunate enough to be able to go through people's individual stories and mm. seeing what they said in the surveys and things, and I, obviously I can't disclose mm. what those were specifically, yeah. but some were were pretty awful, and you know to think that there was no support in that situation, and they knew every you know, to come back from that and to still put yourself forward as an as an artist, I feel like. Too often we are, we do expect to sort of be pushed and pulled in certain ways and be moldable and be flexible and, and be uncomfortable uh, while still doing our job and delivering, you know, the performance. And, you know, we, I think as artists, we, we know that we have to sort of just 
put all that discomfort to the back, but it still impacts us. I mean, we're human. Of course. It's, it, it's, and it's avoidable. And I just, uh, you know, for everyone who took the time to fill out the survey and, and to, you know, share their stories, I think they just, they deserve for the next job to be different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's where I kind of hope it will go, that yeah. the next job eventually we won't be hearing these stories and, and you know, the conversation between hairstylists and artists will be totally different in that chair. There'll, there might actually be one, yeah. you know? Um, I think that's that's the goal. But I, I must admit, hairstylists, anyways, have been fantastic about it. Um, this was never to bully or, or shame any particular department. It was just to raise awareness and to hopefully, you know, call to action some change. And... Of all the hairstylists I've spoken to, they've really come forward and said, yeah. look, actually, you know, I, I wanted the training. I just didn't receive it. Yeah, so my... the problem, as you see, is, is just higher up. Absolutely, the yeah. Hierarchy. Absolutely. Yeah. And in the education uh, education bodies and things like that, where they get trained for, you know, several months to a year, you know, if you're being told that you have all the skills you need, so now, now go forth, um, these should be included and mm-hmm. as a... As a as a mandatory uh, part of yeah. curriculums, and it's just not at the moment. And I think mm-hmm. that's the main problem. Yeah. Yeah. From education. Yeah. yeah. And what do you feel like has been, I, I suppose, do you, do you have a, like a specific instance that really stood out to you that you thought that, okay, this, this is enough, this really needs to change now? I mean, for me, uh, it was definitely when I, I was a lead um, in a commercial and I I was, you know, expecting there to be a certain level of professionalism. They knew I was coming, you know, they get the head start, they get the, you know, you go through rounds of recalls. Um, I booked that job, there'd been no complications, and I went to that job, and on the, on the day, I foolishly, I don't know if I should or shouldn't say that, but foolishly, I didn't bring, like, a range of mm. hair styling products and tools and things, because I thought... Naively, I thought well, I wouldn't need them. Yeah, well, you wouldn't. Like you said, should you be thinking, I've got to literally leave my house with all of my tools <laughs> to do my own hair on a professional job. You know, you're yeah. coming to do your part of the job. Everybody else should be coming to do theirs yeah. as best they can as well. Like you said, it's not a surprise who turns up on that day. Everybody knows in advance who they're dealing with. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, the, that's the same as like a, you know, a stylist rocking up and being like, well... Oh, I've only bought clothes for the women. Yeah. <laughs> so men on the shoot. It's, yeah. It should be exactly, you know, we've come prepared. And so. like, as I got into the chair, you know, I sort of, my hairstylist sort of just said, I don't know what to do with your hair. Wow. And, you know, we had very little time, we had maybe half an hour to play with, to do mm. everything. And she kind of just sort of threw something together. And in the back of my mind, I was sort of like kicking myself because mm. I was like, why didn't you bring some stuff? And shouldn't you, you maybe you should have told her ahead of time maybe you should have told production what you needed was it my fault mm. or was it hers and and whilst I still don't blame her for what happened I do think that because there was never a conversation it was just never thought of yeah. and I came away feeling like I, I remember having to compose myself thinking gosh I don't want to look silly but there's no time left so I have to just suck it up and deal with it mm-hmm. and I came back from that job after it was a couple of days shooting and I thought, mm, you know, that's that wasn't right. Yeah, I don't that want should that never to happen, happen again. Yeah, because it's, comparatively, yeah. other other cast members had everything. Everything was ready. Everything mm. was there for them. The only thing they could possibly not like is uh, personal preference mm-hmm. on, you know, maybe a shade of lipstick mm. or something like that. And you just think my problems weren't yeah. that small. I I th- I've been well lucky maybe um i suppose the theater shows that i have done that a few of them have been you know have had a black cast in them that so i suppose there's been maybe a bit more thought behind them on specific shows because mm. it, you know there was a total like i did hairspray so therefore there's a whole black cast in there but but everything there is wigged anyway so mm. no one was having to really deal with my yeah. own natural hair anyway that was put underneath underneath a wig um, and in Lion King, like that was lovely. That was a lovely experience in the sense that you know the vast majority of the cast is non-white, so there is provision made in that sense. That's a 
positive thing that generally, like you said, I think when I've done commercial jobs or anything else like that, I've, I've, I think I go fully expecting to definitely with my hair do it myself <laughs> and go thinking I'm just going to take stuff just in case yeah. so that you're not left short. But like you said, you shouldn't, we shouldn't have to be thinking I've got to leave with a suitcase full of things just in case the yeah. person doesn't really know what's you know what, what to do with my hair yeah and i thought this is like the first level what about when you're on something for a longer period mm. of time what about when you're sort of with this team day in day out for weeks months however long are you expected to just constantly do your constantly own do your own mm. hair and makeup in some cases and i suppose it's kind of bigger it, it speaks to the bigger issue of how black casts are treated and you know being visible and being understood that it's not just about hair it's that that's a symptom of the fact that you, you're just not being represented across the board and it's about kind of being sympathetic and understanding that there are different issues and the more representation you have both on screen and behind screen that it means that th these things aren't as much of an issue mm. and i mean i suppose it's speaking to how do you kind of keep going when you know that actually the space hasn't really been made for you? It's so difficult. difficult. You kind of, I feel like, like with most things that are uncomfortable truths, you, you, you have to sort of rise above it, you push through it, not really allow it to distract you. But of course it's, it does at times, you know, it gets to you. I think that Afro hair as, as a hair texture is, is it divides people. It's such a contentious point because some people, you know, I've heard from talking to hairstylists, you know, some hairstylists want it to just go away as a trend, and you know that's hard to hear. It's like well, it's not going to just go away. Um, so yeah, I suppose you have to be professional first and foremost, and try and um, have a conversation that is respectful whilst also not diminishing your importance or, or the, the need for it mm. and saying well you know eventually yeah. this is going to have to be addressed and i think i think the fact that it is just out there and it is a conversation i think i personally even for me times before where i may not have said something i feel like absolutely now i would say something if i felt like i wasn't happy with the situation or i wasn't comfortable i felt like i wasn't being provided for in a way mm. that i would speak up because i think that that isn't it until it's brought to the forefront and you, you feel like you're on your own, you feel like this might be the only, you, you're, you're, you're the only person, but now we know that that's not the case, really. Mm, yeah. And you, that does, I think, give you that strength to go, okay, yeah, I've got the job, <laughs> I'm yeah. doing it. You've, you've, yeah. you've obviously booked me because you like me, you want me there. So if you don't feel that it's, you know, you're being provided for in a good enough way, then yeah. hopefully this will make people say okay yeah i feel strong enough and you know brave enough to say yeah no this is this isn't right you know i was pleasantly surprised i've not too long done a commercial job and actually and it was a it was a white mua and she was fantastic yeah. and she um opened up her bag there was cantu in there there was black hair products there was a magic sponge there was all sorts <laughs> in there and i was like yes my girl because that's it, you know who you're working with, you know mm. what my hair looks like, and you know, I felt in total safe hands, which is that's brilliant. lovely, you know, yeah. it's possible. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's what big some like veteran mm. actors have been saying, who, you know, have been in theatre, film, TV, and mm. they've, they've said, you know, it's just knowing, it's just the peace of mind of mm. knowing, okay, maybe I can actually take this extra time that I have, this window of time to maybe line run, or, you mm. know, just prepare to centre myself before I'm about to you know, start and it's, it's it things that as an actor, you as the department for yourself know you have to do. And so you allocate that time as and when you can around all the other departments. But when you know that that's, you don't have that time, it is, it is stressful. So it, it, but it makes a huge difference. Mm. Mm. And how do you feel? One thing I definitely want to touch on is that we're seeing more different black women play different roles. And do you feel like, that is really changing in terms of, as as you know, we mentioned that you know we're seeing more black characters on you know like adverts and things. Do you feel like there has been a huge change, or do you feel like it's kind of just a little bit lip service to? 
No, I feel, I feel like a change is happening. I feel like a, a change was already, I suppose, you know, in some ways. There was, there was representation there in, to some level before, and it's ramping, ramping up now. Um, you know, we can say it's tokenistic, we could say, but it's, it's got to start from somewhere. It might feel totally saturated now because, obviously, everything you're seeing here is people really trying to make an effort to be inclusive. Mm. But it has to start somewhere, like we were saying yeah. earlier, like we're seeing it on screen. That hopefully slowly filters its way back so that there's people behind screen also that are, you know, there's a diverse set of people behind screen. And it's something that doesn't feel like it's a fad, that it's just going to kind of then slowly go back to what it was <laughs> before, that it does now, that there is representation and the roles are varied. And mm. I mean, I feel like it. I, not too long, I shot an episode of EastEnders a little while ago. Um, and the when the casting came in, it came from a casting for diversity and something title of this person was to do with inclusive mm. casting, Yeah, which I was like, oh, Okay, well, some, some effort, there we go, that's something that's behind the scene that's been made, that we're seeing a diverse group of people for this role. This is, this is it. I think that's the proof is in the text, literally, yeah. which comes through with the breakdown, that you can see, as, an, as the artist from your agent, that it says, you know, di diverse options, yeah. please, mm -hmm. for the role. Even if, and so I think casting directors and, and productions are thinking, okay, well, does it have to be a white character can it be a diverse person and you can see that and so now i think more so than ever despite covid19 mm. there are a, there's a lot of work and there's a mm. lot of um casting that's going out to you know black actors i mean i've seen a lot yeah more. i personally feel like that's happening for me as yeah. someone that's kind of sort of i suppose maybe in a bit of a transition coming from theater and trying to work more in tv and film i feel like that's happening for me that i'm being seen for things that that don't feel colour specific, that mm. don't feel like it's for a black character, which is ultimately, like I said at the beginning, that's where we want to get to, we're being yeah. seen. So you're getting, yeah. it just naturally you're getting to play with more and diverse mm -hmm. characters in terms of the person, the personality, yeah. as opposed to <clears throat> looking a certain way. And you know, you kind of, I suppose as, as an actor, you, you don't want that to be the only thing that yeah. they are focused on. Mm. That oh shouldn't gosh. be the decide. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't, be the, it shouldn't be the way we live our lives either. I feel like, like you're not, you know, Gemma yes, the black girl. Yeah, Gemma the black girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm Gemma. I'm mum. I'm my age. I am the, where I come from. You know, my heritage. I, you know, you're so many different things. So you don't want to be walking in there and you know, just your, the colour of your skin be the only yeah. thing that is defining you. Mm. And I don't think I've ever lived my life in that way. I, it, I suppose in being in a culture that's predominantly white. I don't know, some people, it can, that can happen, I think. You feel very much the other. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I suppose it's perception. It's how, again, you see yourself and how you choose also to walk through yeah. through the world. So I suppose it's only when certain things, like we're saying, maybe about hair or something that is quite distinctively different that you're made to kind of feel like, oh my goodness, I feel different now. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it's not even you that yeah. does feel that way until somebody else makes you feel like... Yeah. Oh goodness, yeah. I didn't even think for a second I should be worrying about bringing something, you know. Because we walked in there thinking I shouldn't have to be walking with my things. And and then until you were in the situation, you're like, oh my goodness, oh, yeah. I've, I've not been provided for here, you yeah. know. So, yeah. It's... And being a working mum as well, mm. um, I suppose, how, how does that influence you being an actress? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hanging on by a thread, guys. <laughs> no, no, really. it's, it's, it's crazy. It's changed, but I don't know. I think in many ways it is. Uh, we're very used to, I think, as being actresses. You just you roll with the punches. You are, you know, you know what's happening for a few months one time. The next time you're like, I don't know what's going on for the next few months. And motherhood's very much like that. So I feel like I was quite well equipped for it when I first had my baby. He's three and a half now. He's not a baby. Um, I felt just like I was out of work. It didn't, you know, maternity felt just like, oh, this is just some downtime. I'm not in work at the moment. Did you take a break, like a break, or did you just sort not of really. let it, okay. Wow. Not really. Um, I mean, I, I said to myself, I didn't want to, I had come out of long contracts in theater. So I'd said to myself, that was the one thing I said, okay, at the moment now, mm -hmm. I won't say yes to anything long running. Mm -hmm. um, but I was on a film set I think three months after I was on a film set, I think three three months after having him, oh, I wow. think it was, yeah, three odd months and expressing milk in the trailer and all sorts. I just kept 
kept it moving because uh, opportunities came up and I was like, I'm not going to say no to that because yeah, he was a good baby and mm. I've got a lot of family and support around me. So, um, But at the same time, it, it's a real hard one because it's another thing I think you're contesting and a whole nother issue. It is, it's now our industry again. It's probably lagging behind with providing enough support for families, which is mm. ridiculous in the sense that so many people out there are parents yeah. that work in this industry that's really unforgiven, especially I think in theatre, that is all so consumed, that is six days a week, that is, you know, mm. it's hard, it's long, you have one day off a week, it's and it's relentless and you're doing that again and again and again for weeks if you're in a long contract, that could be a year. Yeah. So we, I feel like it is lagging behind in many ways. I remember reading, maybe a year ago, if not more, it was when um, 42nd Street, I want to say, was on and I'd heard for the first time, I think they'd done like a job share with, a, with an ensemble member that was that had a child and she was able to job share. But that was the first time I'd ever read anything in terms of they yeah. were happy to do a job share. But things like that should be normalised. Yeah, it should be just a bit more well, normalised. It's interesting because um, because of COVID-19, there's been an upswing in, in complaints actually to unions around um, discrimination against pregnant artists saying, you know, they, they're, not, they're being overlooked for jobs because they're known to be pregnant. Mm. And, and you just think, well... Oh, is, is that because of a risk of COVID or is it just... I mean, there's, there's probably an element mm. of that going mm. on, but they're no more or less at risk mm. than someone else who's booking that job who's mm. not pregnant. Yeah. But it's, I, think it's the, I think it's this... It's awkward. Mm. <laughs> it's an awkward thing to have to juggle. And yeah. If something were to go wrong, they're not just responsible for one person, they're responsible for two. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I think it's also just the, the way our industry looks at pregnant women. Yeah. And I mean, as much as I'm saying, on the whole, I think the industry definitely needs to come up. Again, my experiences have been quite nice. When I was pregnant with my son, I was in the show already. <clears throat> so I was doing Curious and actually they were fantastic with me. They was just really well just took care of me inside the show I was able to stay I had a lovely pregnancy so I stayed till I was 36 weeks gone oh, wow. in the show and my maternity cover was brought in to do all like there was a lot of heavy lifting in there so she was brought in to do the heavy stuff that I couldn't do and shouldn't do anymore and I was still able to do all my acting scenes which was great so I was taking really good care and actually I went back and did Curious after having him and even that that was lovely because the director at the time Katie Rudd she had not too long had a baby herself so it was again so nice to see on the other side of the table there was somebody there that was a mum working mum I remember going into the audition for it because I hadn't met Katie before I had to take I had to which happens just so much phone my friends to say oh, I've got my child can you look after my baby while I go and audition for something <laughs> one of my really good friends did come so she was wheeling in and around outside I stepped into the audition and Katie was in the same position. Her mum was literally outside with her baby doing the same thing. So I was like, yeah, this is so nice. Mm. And also through rehearsal, her mum would come and bring the bubba. It was just a lovely, nice to see that, you know, slowly. I think this know, is literally this is why this. diversity is so important. Yeah. It's, not, it's not to sound loud or be a token or raise a card and all that rubbish. Mm. I think it's because of there naturally is diversity of thought. People get it. And if you're not the person who gets it, someone else in the room will get it because mm -hmm. they've experienced that, That's whether it. they be male, female, of whatever minority, you know, whatever ethnic ethnicity, they, they understand what it's like yeah. mm -hmm. and they can then have that discussion with you or at least make some sort of contingency plan for you. But when there is a lack of diversity, so many balls just get dropped. Mm. And so many, you, you just hear no, 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 because they just, they think, they panic. panic. They think, it's you know, panic, isn't it? It's panic. They think, it's we panic. can deal with this. I yeah. can't budget for this. Or mm. I can't, I don't know what's best for you. So yeah. I'm just going to say no. No. Yeah. <laughs> another, another subject, I suppose, that I wanted to touch on as well. And, you know, from as, as a viewer of, you know, the, the arts and, you know, films like film and stage. And basically the argument that as creators, black creators in the UK, we have to go to the US to kind of find the roles that should be here. I mean, you know, what would you say to that? I, I, and, you know, like we've got some amazing actresses who are doing amazing stuff abroad mm -hmm. and, you know, and I think they're kind of almost being ambassadors for, for, mm -hmm. for black British yeah. talent. 
So in some ways, you can say, you know, but, but them for, to get the platform and mm. the, that they've got, they felt that they've had to go to the States in order mm. to rise to that level. And it's true, I suppose, well, I mean, we're a smaller country, aren't we? I mean, the, the levels, and you I, know. I mean, I think that the UK has this love affair with, like, the royal family and this whole kind of that sort of image of Britain mm. yeah. and that image of Britain is very small uh, it's not very diverse <laughs> so you do see a lot of um, I suppose dated kind of Ideas, era yeah, type yeah, yeah. things yeah. coming out of TV and film and 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 in theatre I mean you could probably talk mm. on this better than I can but it it's often you know they repeat the same mm -hmm. kind of things mm -hmm. and that means that you never get diversity and sometimes when they do break out I think there was a Romeo and Juliet recently with a, an Asian Romeo mm -hmm. and that caused uproar and there was a lot of very un-PC reviews left about that and you think people aren't want, they're not willing to change, they're not receptive to it um, because we know what we're good at, we know what people want from this small island mm -hmm. and, and in America I think they just have such a wealth of diversity and yes it's a big country, there's a lot more people to um, Cater to, I think, and so there, there was a need for it. There was a want yeah. for it. Even though it might be a minority, it would be a bigger <laughs> minority, you know. Yeah. So, like you said, if it was a black network putting that on, you know, you've got the audience right there and then, haven't you? Whereas for here, we're the minority, and you're going through just one channel, yeah. you know, or one of very few channels. You know, the yeah. likelihood of your story then coming yeah. out, I suppose, <laughs> you know, as an important <laughs> one is. So yeah, I, I think that probably still remains to be true. Really, I think that depending on the level of success that you see for yourself or want, some pro people probably still do feel like they need to go abroad to really make it big, yeah. as it were. And, <laughs> and, yes, um, well, no, you just, you immediately hear for, you know, actors saying, oh, there's just, A, they get more castings mm. because there's just more being um, filmed. And then, naturally, again, the range of, of roles that they get to experience and, and be considered for because they are even on the table to be performed, they mm. you know they get an opportunity at that and then they 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 are successful because I suppose they like they like us out there mm. and we can do an all right American accent. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose for me it's kind of seen I, I want to see the roles those American roles or those types of diverse roles here in the UK. I don't, you know, as much as I enjoy US television and it's fantastic production values, but I want to see kind of unique British stories. And, you know, mm. it's like, who, who, who are the gatekeepers and who mm. do we challenge to make, make a difference in, in that sense? I mean, if we had access to those kids, we would have that right. conversation. I You'd mean, be here with me. <laughs> and I suppose, you know, you see in it slightly, we've got, we've got the likes of Michaela Cole, you know, mm -hmm. flying that flag at the moment and being able to be in those rooms now and being able to have a fantastic show on BBC in prime time, you know, TV that she's written, that she's in, that she's directed, that she's very much is hers, you mm -hmm. know, and that is so amazing to see. Like, I think whether you liked it or didn't like it or you know whether it whether it appealed to the masses or not such a big deal and i've looked at a lot of things even online about that and the way that it just emboldened so many people from so many different points of view with the subject matters that were being spoken about in that show it's just you're just like yeah this is why you need to see and hear different stories there's yeah. someone even if it is only a small percentage of people it doesn't matter before that point that group of people felt that like they haven't been represented and now they're going yeah, and I never thought this is amazing. Like, it's so great to see myself there on, yeah. you know, on screen. So, I mean, we hope that that just continues. Like, we hope that we I don't mean, go backwards. No, I, I, think, I don't think we will. I mean, it's mm. definitely been brought up uh, as an issue around, you know, writers and the diversity amongst them, and and you know, who is writing these stories, and then who is signing off on these stories. And I think that for me, I feel like they are the gatekeepers because they are the tellers of the original tales, and then. If they, if they say that it has to be a specific look to a character, then as actors, we don't really have a say right, in that. Yeah. And um, I suppose, yeah, it's just this idea of people wanting and being willing to try something that's yeah. new and, you know, not assume it will be a car crash. Yeah. 
so it's having those opportunities, being given the opportunity, and I, I don't know. I think it's 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 moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Is all we can say. I think it will be slow coming, but it's definitely moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. it gives me hope. And mm -hmm. what would you say to I suppose young young actresses, black women who want to get into into the field? Do it. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> and also, I suppose as well. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, your place, you absolutely deserve your place there, I think, where where you've got it and not feeling like you are lucky to have your job. I yeah. think that for some one reason or another, I think we do, we're in this industry and when you get a job, you feel so like, oh my goodness, I've got this job, I'm so lucky. And you do feel like I can't mess this up, I can't say anything if I feel I know that something's not going my way. And I think that that's the attitude, again, that needs to sort of change. It's like you deserve to be there. Yeah. And you also deserve to speak up if you feel like something isn't working or isn't sort of right for you. And like Helen said, if that's done in a professional way, and, you know, then you should be able to say, yeah, I feel... And it's so funny, in, in, in theatre, I think that's... I think we're even further behind. It was so interesting, I think, again, coming from me doing sort of musical theatre, which is what I walked into this industry doing, and then moving into more straight acting... I, I think I was so pleasantly surprised. I did a show and how the actors actually would, would speak up for themselves if they weren't happy with something. In musical theatre, I found that that just never happened. Like, you, you just did what you were told, generally. Um, and that doesn't matter what kind of age group of people, that it, which, you know, there is a you know, massive age range of people mm. in there. Was that because there was a really strict hierarchy kind of going on there? Did yeah, I, I wonder what the... What the what the difference is, but they definitely felt like a difference to me. I remember, I remember it now, just feeling like, yeah, this actor is speaking up because he's not happy with what I don't know what it, I can't remember what it was to do with maybe rehearsing or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, you're just not. No, <laughs> I've got a life. I can't do this. Let's. And that just felt like that was a movable thing. But it was so good to see that. Yeah, I'm, you don't, you sort of feel like the bottom of the rung there sometimes, and that it shouldn't be like that. I should be able to say if I'm not happy with something, you know. And I think you've, if you come into the industry young, you also don't feel like you think it's my no, first job. Not. I'm only 21 or whatever. You, you of course, you, you know, you're only finding yourself there. How do you possibly, you know, put my hand up and say, I'm not happy with this. But at some point, I think as you grow older and you learn the industry more, mm -hmm. you have to be willing to, yeah. yeah. Be confident enough yeah, to speak out. Yeah, use your voice. Absolutely. And I think that's, I think if, if you have, if you really want to act and you really want to be a performer, I think that, I mean, I personally know that I, I can't imagine doing anything and loving as, anything as much as I love acting. And so I wouldn't, I don't think you should deprive yourself of that. And I think you should, you should give it your best shot, have a good go. And, and remember that you are an individual with something to offer, mm. something different to offer. That's right. And that will always be true. And it's just a question of allowing the industry to evolve and being there when it does that's what's important because if you if you don't try you you won't be there mm. it, it, there's so many things that happen on this journey that you can't plan for yeah. and opportunities will arise by various methods and if you're willing to be brave enough to try and just be in that moment be available for that then i think that you can have a wonderful career. Mm. It's the timing very much. It's, yeah. it's, it's everything, isn't it? It's yeah. time. And I suppose, what what do you guys see from the project? What do you what do you envisage, and what do you kind of feel like? How do you feel like it could go further? God, it would be it would just be lovely to see those pictures, like in big somewhere somewhere public for people to come and see. I think it yeah. it was a, being a part of that project was. So amazing, and really by chance that, that yeah. I was involved in it. Definitely, I was rehearsing in the same space that you worked in, and was asked to do it. And was like, oh, I might just see what this girl's saying. Okay, oh, oh, pictures, free pictures. Didn't know much about it, and honestly, was the most amazing day shooting, and so lovely to walk into a space which I don't think it's ever happened to me that it was black female led, you know, Celebrate females, that. strong females, people doing bits in their industry, whether that was the stylist, the, you know, HMUA, whoever it was, it was so lovely to spend a day with strong black women, you know, creating this shoot. So, I mean, it would be lovely to see them, like you said, in a, in a public space that people can come and see. We're, we're working, work. yeah. Yeah. We're working on it, yes. we're working on it. And I think for me as well, it's just, you know, even, 
the fact that I've uh, taken photographs of black actresses as, as a starting point, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see more black women, you know, being celebrated. And that, that was kind of the point of the project. It was because I was just literally just seeing us being stepped over. You know, you wouldn't see someone being celebrated. Yes, we have, the, you know, one or two pe people who kind of consistently uncovers. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, you know, from the BAFTAs yeah. to the Oscars, you know, it's, it's there is only ever one. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's just kind of like, well, you know, if no one else is going to do it, then, you know, mm -hmm. and I've got the op opportunity to do it and the ability to do it. That was kind of why I did it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. And really? I think that's where I want to see that, you know, that we acknowledge what we contribute mm -hmm. to, to society, to, to the creative arts, and just, you know, across different sectors. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah, we're, we're slightly overlooked, or well, no, not slightly, very much mm -hmm. overlooked in, in that sense. And that's kind of, you know, the ball pushing, yeah. trying to push that change, Absolutely. you know, be, be the change you want to see. Absolutely, yeah. You know, Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think, any any closing words, any? <laughs> I think it's it's such a there's so many areas that you can go into talking about this I think that it's I think it's whatever you, it means to you mm. I think it shouldn't be defined by how you look I think that this is this is what we need to get away from you know being black isn't one thing it doesn't look one way it's not styled one way and it doesn't have to fit into any other box you know it's just it is mm -hmm. And that should be celebrated because it's beautiful. Mm. And diversity is beautiful. Yeah. And this country is diverse. Like we do live in a very multicultural. Absolutely. You know, so yeah, the representation, seeing it is it feels necessary. It should yeah. it should be there. It should be more normal. And what what would you say to sort of any casting directors or, you know, any any director any any sort of I suppose the higher ups in, in mm. creative arts, like what can they do to make a difference? Employ some, I think, just get some diversity, yeah. Get that diversity up in those upper levels. I think that's what's going to make the difference that then filters down to us as actors trying to get the work as well. Don't think you have all the answers. Mm. Ask questions mm. and be challenge yourself with, yeah, new opportunities working with different people. Um, and yeah, I, bit, I mean, we're all as departments confined by various, you know, other levels and other departments and things like that. But I think if we all have this mission of moving forward and, and broadening how we how we work and and what that looks like, I don't think you can go wrong. Really. Mm. Cool. <laughs> well, guys, time's up. Um, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's so <laughs> good. <laughs> it went really quickly. Um, so if you hang around, we are going to transition to some of the images from the exhibition. I um, really hope that you enjoyed this live talk, bar the <laughs> slight <laughs> technical difficulties. This is my first time ever doing this, so thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, definitely jump on Instagram and leave some comments. Um, jump on YouTube, leave some comments. And yeah, enjoy. Thank you. Bye. Bye.